We've looked at 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 45 degrees, and we found their sines and their cosines. Those angles are very atypical. Um, 999 times out of a thousand, if you want to know the sine or the cosine of a number, you're going to have to use a calculator. Um, so let's quickly demonstrate how to find the sine and the cosine on a calculator and the tangent two for that matter. Um, well, it's pretty straightforward. You see these buttons, sin for sine, cos for cosine, tan for tangent. So if you want to know the sine of a number, you just click sin, sine, and then you'd type in the number. Um, I guess really the only wrinkle is that, you know, the sine of 70 degrees and the sine of 70 radians are not going to be the same. So you need to tell your calculator are we working in degrees or are we working in radians? And we do that in, we press this mode button up here. And you see radian degree. Currently, we're measuring angles in degrees. This is what's highlighted. So if we wanted the sine of 70 degrees, like so, we would go to our calculator, we'd hit the sine button, and we'd type in 70. Sines and cosines are always I mean, basically all is going to be very long and unappealing decimals. Um, this is about 0.94. Did not mean to share the whiteboard. Let's try that again. The sign of 70 degrees is about 0.94. Now, suppose I ask for the sine of 70, but I don't have a degree symbol. Well, if you don't have a degree symbol, then you're working in radian. So, I would have to go to mode and scroll down using these arrow keys and select radian. And now I can quit out and find the sign of 70 radians about 0 0.77. And that's how to find the sine and the cosine, and also the tangent, which we haven't got into yet, but we saw the tangent button. That's how we find sines and cosines on our calculators. And, you know, I'm assuming it, it's in the syllabus that we have, you know, a TI-84 or something like that, but you know, $15 much cheaper calculators will usually also have the trig functions on them.